Let us pray, Paul, for our Bible study. Our Almighty Father in heaven, once again, we offer you our many thanks. Because it is our faith, Father, because of your love and your compassion, you continue to shower us with the blessing coming from you, allowing us to once more live a life worthy before your sight. Even though we have so many faults, we have so many iniquities before your sight, your love is able to cleanse us of our sins and allow us to be able to once again hear your words and your teachings so that it will be our guiding light as we continue to sojourn in this world. Father, once again, open our hearts and, the, and our minds. Please give us the understanding that we need so that once your teachings are pronounced to each and every one of us, may we be able to discern your commandments and allow them to be lived in our lives in accordance to your will. Father, we pray for our brother whom you shall use as your instrument. Please endow in him the knowledge coming from you, so that, Father, he may be able to preach with clarity and power. Send forth the Holy Spirit, Father, so that we will all benefit from the wisdom coming from the Holy Scriptures that our brother will be able to teach to each and every one of us and allow it to be our light, Father, as we continue to sojourn in this world. We pray for all of those who are constantly persecuted and oppressed. Please, Father, hearken to their prayers, protect them at all times, and allow them to be set free at your appointed time so that all of us will be free once again to worship and magnify your holy name. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters all over the world. May you rekindle their faith in their, in their hearts, Father, so that we may continue to utilize the life and strength that you continue to lend to each and every one of us as we also worship and magnify your holy name. We humbly believe, Father, that you have heard our prayers and that you will be with us throughout the whole duration of our Bible study. For all of these things we ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen. Beloved uh, brothers and sisters, not pleasant day to each and every one of us. Uh, today uh, marks the first uh, year of the passing away of Brother Jesse Makaspa. And as we know that, uh, that what they have labored for and as well as those who have gone before them, we do remember them of their sacrifices and labors that they have done for us for our faith. Is this really in accordance to the teachings of the Holy Scriptures that we should remember those who have worked hard for our faith? Let us start our study here in Hebrew 13 7. Remember your leaders and superiors in authority, for it was they who brought to you the word of God. Observe attentively and consider their manner of living, the outcome of their well-spent lives, and imitate their faith, their conviction that God exists and is the creator and ruler of all things, the provider and bestower of eternal salvation through Christ, and their leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. So really, it is a teaching in the Holy Scriptures that when times like this, we could start to, start to remember those who have worked hard for us. And so we know that what happened uh, during the time of uh, when Brother Jesse Makaspak was still alive, he was supposed to um, disseminate or allow that all the letters, more than more or less than the 10,000 letters that were supposed to be given out, supposed to be done on July 27 of 2018. We must understand that uh, it became earlier because somewhere in April, he was interrogated and he was expelled from the synagogues. And because of this, he was able to decide that it should be therefore May 10, 
that we should start already in disseminating all these letters that he have, has made more or less than five years, which he started to allow to be disseminated in the post offices and also in the email blast on May 10 of 2018. So uh, before everything else, brothers and sisters, he, he had plans to be with us in the anniversary on July 27 of 2018. But we understand that when it was revealed to him that he has this mission that he has to do, he did not want really to uh, do this mission because he was afraid of the so many of the ministers and so many of those who are there in the ministry, including the executive minister and also the Sangunian and all that. But despite of all this, brothers and sisters, God uh, confirmed through him through the dreams that he, dreams he had that he would be able to not, he shouldn't be afraid because he, God has chosen those who are weak and those who are foolish according to the verse of First Corinthians 1, 27. And so what happened is that God showed him three doors. The three doors that he uh, chose, he chose one of them, the door that would end his life because that was the one that he wanted uh, to enter in so that he don't have to face and have to do this mission that was given to him. But when he entered there, he asked God, why is it that he, he did not die? And so God replied that he has something to do first. And then after that, God granted his wish after he was given 10 years to do his mission, but he accomplished everything more than five or six years of uh, brethren, and then God allowed him to rest on July 17, 2018. But some of the reply of the letters, uh, we have one that he was talking about, that he will be speaking about, and uh, there's another part of it as well, but uh, it got cut off somewhere. But we will show you all the letters that were sent uh, later and where they all reach, beloved brethren. Here's uh, Brother Jesse Makaspak when he was still alive, and he is now uh, resting, but here's his preaching about the result of one of those letters or two of his letters that came back to him. During Thanksgiving or during the anniversary of the church. The message is to be read to you. Everything that I will say, I will be reading two letters of reactions on the um, letters that we have sent out throughout the world. We were able to send more than 9,000 letters throughout the world from Hawaii. I do not know exactly how many letters were mailed by the mainland in California. So the letters that we were able to send out more than 10,000. I received two letters, emails. I will impart them to you 
this morning. I know you will be interested. I just like to advise you that we have to be extra careful on how we live, especially this path life is toward us, the family Magaspak and the Riveras of Hawaii. So let us try our best to be more active, especially in doing our duties to our God. I'll be reading the two messages. Brother Jesse, I hope my letter reaches you well, in peace and in good health. I am an old minister like you, but is still active and has a local. I will not give details on my whereabouts because as you know, older ministers like us are highly watched since your letter reads many brethren all over the world. Loyalty checks are now more frequently done and we are threatened to be accused of rebellion against the administration and against God if questions arise regarding any of the procedures or activities launched by the Sangunian or Brother Eduardo. In all my life in the ministry, I have not witnessed this kind of self-exaltation, especially during Brother Erdi and Brother Felix, only now during the time of Brother Eduardo. I too received your letter. Eventually, I found out that many of us in our district receive it, including many brethren who are close to me. At first, no one said a word to each other since we do not know who to trust and will not report this to the administration. When I got your letter, I immediately wrapped it in a blank and placed it in a blank and hid it in the blank of the pastoral to ensure that no one sees it in case a surprise inspection is conducted like what they did before. At midnight, I took it with me inside the chapel where I went to the pulpit, the podium, and prayed for guidance in what I was about to do. While reading your letter, I could not stop my tears from flowing from the beginning to the end. It was as if my chest was severely beaten from the pain I felt with your every word. I felt the sincere sentiments of an exceptional servant of God in you. And I can truly say that your ministry is more truthful than any one of us. 
I feel ashamed that I don't have your courage expected of me by our God so that we may not be likened to dogs who cannot bark and is therefore useless. You did not hold back in speaking up to EVM with all truthfulness brought about by a higher level of love and faith to gently remind him of his errors. You did not fear to show the crooked justification of Brother Eduardo regarding what he did to his parents, especially to his mother and his younger brothers and sisters. I feel your intense aim to correct his way of thinking and remove the evil spirit in his heart and the hate he has against his siblings. If only love and kindness prevail in the heart of the current administrator of the church, this scandal and shame would have not happened to the church all over the world. I saw how you strive to remain a true soldier of God to fulfill our sworn duty to care for the brethren and their faith so they can continue until God removes EVM and all corrupt and disobedient ministers under his leadership. But from what I have seen happening in the church and how your clan, that is the whole family, has been mistreated, God shows us all the signs that he has allowed this administration to fall into making errors. They have been blinded by fame and riches. Their involvement in scandals venturing into business, phoning, that is Pagsasalla, and owning money from the banks just to add a few more. My vow prayers have been answered and your letter fortified my decision. Although I have known this anomalies for a while and EBM's separation from the doctrines and procedures, I remain silent. My faith was that God will reveal all things and he will remove Brother Eduardo and punish him and those ministers like him and God will replace them with an administration who possess the heart and spirit of the former leaders of the nation of God. This is why, although I remain in my duty, I no longer follow the useless instructions of the Sangonian. I know they only want to exalt Brother Eduardo for his own glory. In this way, it is revealed that EVM is still childlike or immature. He is easily swayed by opinions and intentions of those around him, including this one. 
one with ABM and make ABM smile. Mantra to cover up for the insecurities. This was not allowed in the times of our former dynamic leaders. The focus has been taken away from God, from and from our Lord Jesus, and given to the executive minister. Many times, Brother Erdi was uh, when when Brother Erdi was alive. Out of love, the brethren tried to give him accolades, but he refused to accept them to prevent anyone from honoring him more than our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Erdi and the last messenger in these last days were dynamic and powerful, but they were humble and filled with love and kindness, and it was evident that they were guided by the Holy Spirit. I pray to God that he may give me the chance to prove my word as a servant with the right qualities to shepherd his fold. May he give me the courage to stand up for his righteousness and to no longer be an instrument of a disobedient administration, a leadership swallowed by greed, jealousy, and hate in the person of Brother Eduardo. This is to test his nation if we will entrust our faith and godly fear unto him who is all-powerful and unto man or unto man who use power and authority to oppress the rights and freedom of those who stand for the truth and refuse to follow his selfish ambitions. I truly miss the days of Brother Erdi even though he was strict because he disciplined accordingly and with love, just like a father to a son. Uh, and although the church was in the pinnacle of success worldwide, he did not give in to the fame and glory. He lived humbly. He refused any government position and worldly recognitions May it be Guinness World Records which do not give praise to God, but only to those who are thirsty for their attention and worldly world. Your letter to the brethren and to your co-ministers truly shocked the administration. The Sangonian gave his strict instruction to all brethren not to read your letter and emails but to give it to their respective local and district leaders with a written statement of loyalty to brother Eduardo Manalo. This is the topic of the meetings with all the officers and brethren nowadays. Those who are proven to have read it must also make a video stating their loyalty to ABM. We were also instructed to conduct visitations and warn, warn the brethren of the danger of reading these kinds of letters defaming the administration and to treat this letter like poison or anthrax done by terrorists and those who read this will suffer the same misfortune. By this, it is clearly seen how affected the administration, effective the administration is by the truth regarding 
what is happening to the church in all of church history. It is only now when brethren are told not to read something as if they do not have the intelligence to discern truth from lies and right from wrong. What they do not understand is that the more they hide things from the brethren, the more they will ask questions and soon their eyes will be open to the truth that cannot be hidden for all times. I would like to thank you, Brother Jesse, because God used you as his instrument. You gave inspiration and guidance to many brethren and to ministers like me all over the world so that we too may fully stand by the side of God and his righteousness. We ministers and brethren have talked and we now know what to do. Should we be summoned by the district office or by the Sangonian, we will no longer be instruments of evil and wrongdoings. We will obey God first before men. God will fulfill his promise not to forsake us and he will grant us our every need. I know that when I face our God, I can hold my head up high and say that I have finished the race and I fought the good fight. I pray that many more will be awakened to the truth and will choose God now instead of pretending still to be one with ABM. Our hope is that the soonest possible time we will be called in so we may say what we truly feel inside. We do not hate anyone from the clan of the messenger that includes the insolent son of Brother Erdi, Brother Eduardo, may I be with you in the same stand in the soonest possible time. May God bless all those whom God used for his holy word in cleansing the flock to be worthy of salvation. May our God bless us, all your brother in the ministry. The initial brother R A. Are you still listening? Or are you already tired in listening? There is another one letter. That is the first letter. Another one. He did not describe his identity because of the danger. So we thank God for this brethren, even though I do not know yet them personal. This is the second email. I can only imagine what this fellow minister and those like him must have felt upon reading the cry and plea of a veteran minister who has served three generations of executive ministers in the church and was instrumental in its pioneering expansion in the Far West. Most of the ministers today, especially the young, 
and the arrogant would probably not survive the ministry during that era. This overprivileged, snotty, and naive ministers during the time of EBM and Angelo could not even fathom the thought of living with no allowance, no housing provisions, no vehicles, no cell phone, no internet, no computers, no laptops and projectors, only their faith in God and love for the church that fueled their drive to shepherd the flock and propagate the words of God in a time when the Church of Christ was not yet known in places where there were railway, if not none, any members of Beloved uh, brothers and sisters, um, that is a part of the during Thanksgiving the part, the last part of the letter, but somehow uh, it got cut off because we ran out of footage on that time. But despite of that, we can see that those who have gone before us they have stood firm in their conviction. The letters that they have uh, prepared ever since that they were able to receive those dreams way back in 2013. Um, then to the point of more than more or less than five years, everything was all completed, the letters, more than more or less than 10,000 letters. Here are some of the footage of those uh, hard work that was done um, when the letters were all being already uh, mailed. Um, there's Sir Claire, there's Brother Lee there. Those are the post uh, lady there helping in uh, these letters to be sent out in the different parts of the world. Uh, go to the next footage, please. And there are more coming from the van, see? Uh, there are so many of them uh, which reached more than, more or less than 10,000 letters that were sent in all the different districts and different locales throughout the world and uh, that's the reason why uh, some wrote back, but yet uh, we do believe that some of, or most of the brethren have received, uh, or the locales have received their share of the letter. Mm. Proceed. And those are the district by the world region. Uh, you can see there where it all reached and the locales within these districts, you could probably see uh, brothers and sisters, where all these letters reach, and if by chance the letters didn't reach there, there was an email blast that was done uh, on that day also, also uh, brother, uh, brothers and sisters, and it reached them through means of their uh, computer or their email, uh, beloved brethren. Let's proceed. And because uh, uh, God already saw that he has finished what he had to do because when he was given those three doors uh, to choose which one is the one that he will choose, he chose the third one, which is the worst of all. And when he asked, well, can we didn't die because God said, I want you to do something first. And so when he accomplished his uh, goal in finishing his race, then God allowed him to rest right there beside uh, our uh, the loving mother of which is Sister Avelina Makaspak, they're beside each other uh, there uh, in the burial. That's why July 17, as today, marks the first year of the passing away of Brother Jesse Makaspak. And those are his uh, children and um, grandchildren there in the middle there. Any, any other, other pictures? So this, uh, beloved brothers and sisters, uh, we hope that what we and those who have gone before us, who stood firm in their conviction, will be found in us. 
especially those who knows already what is right. The book of the Bible in James 4, 17 states there for him that knows what is right but doesn't do it, it's a sin. So let us stand for what is right. Let us be bold in our calling, in being God's ministers, in defending the church. Let us be among those who are not hireling. We must not be among those people like pastors. We're just after the pay. No, we're here to support and take good care of the sheep. The sheep, those are the people of God, the flock of God, Ezekiel 34, 31. And so a good shepherd, according to the book of John 10, 14, he's willing to give his life for the sheep. That is the good shepherd. We are willing to give ourselves for the mission of God's people so that those who would follow our Lord Jesus Christ instead of man, they will be given eternal life. That's written in John 10, 28 to 29. So for all of us, when we are being taught by the Lord Jesus Christ, his teachings and his commandments, we know those teachings are not from him, but comes from God who sent him those commandments as written in John 12, 49. So for us to prepare all the more for the nearing anniversary, brothers and sisters in Romans 12, 1, we have to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, sacrifice holy and acceptable before God. What is it that is holy? Romans 7, 12, the words of God, the laws of God are holy and Whose laws are these? Galatians 6, 2. These are the laws of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many laws of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like we must, uh, we must love one another as he has loved us, as written in John 13, 34 to 35, so that we can be true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when there's something that is wrong between any one of us, he continues to teach us in the book of Matthew 18, 15, and 16. If your brother sins against you, go to him privately and tell him his fault. And if he listens to you, you have won your brother back. So the first one that you know if someone is against you, our Lord Jesus Christ, the true shepherd, willing to give his life for the flock, is willing to teach us in how we should love one another. If God, through Christ, Christ said to us that he's willing or he gave his life for the church, Ephesians 5.25, then we should also be willing to give our lives for our brethren if need be, John 13.34-35. to 35. So these teachings, these commandments, they have been given to Christ. Why? What is pleasing before God's sight in Psalms 133? What is pleasing there is that brethren, dwell together in unity. And we know that salvation is given to those who does so. If you just continue reading the book of Psalms 133 and 3. So uh, brothers and sisters, how do we know therefore that we will be among those who will receive such blessings if we obey the commandments of Christ and God? They will abide in us through the Spirit. Whose Spirit is that? Galatians 4, 6, God will send His Spirit of His Son into our hearts. When will it all be more possible? 1820 of the book of Matthew, if two or three are gathered in my name, Christ says, there am I in their midst. But of course, if you read 15, 16, 17, and 18 there, it concerns the process of how we should strive to fix our problems with one another so that on that day when we also do our thanksgiving to God, we know that we will be blessed by our Lord Almighty God. Would it be really possible for us to really accomplish our goal? Philippians 4.13, Christ says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because when I am weak, then I am strong, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. And so what kind of heart is it that God would want to see in us when we approach and draw near to him? He wants that we have a contrite heart, 
a broken spirit. And he will be near those who are broken in spirit or have a contrite heart. 3418 of the book of Psalms. So on that day of our thanksgiving, we may not have enough that we may offer to God. But what is it that God will all the more accept on the day of our thanksgiving? Those who have a broken spirit, he will not despise according to the book of Psalms 5017. So what is it that we should ask of our God so that we would be amongst those who remain having the spirit of God and so that we would be considered as his because those who are covered by the spirit of God, they are amongst those who belong to God, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And so what should we ask? If you read Psalms 51, 10 through 11, it says there that, we should ask God to create in us a clean heart and do not remove the Holy Spirit from us. That is the only one that makes us strong and firm. Our loved ones have gone and passed by. They are now resting in their grave. But what they leave to us are the pure words of God that we should hold on to that would bring us all the more to our assurance of our salvation and the peace that we all seek is our peace with our God, with our loved ones, with our brothers and sisters, all for the glory of God our Father. This is our lesson. Some, uh, please all stand and we will pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We remember those who have gone before us, how they really work and how they really spend their times for the sake of your holy church. Some of them are our loved ones. We saw how they really work, their loyalty and faithfulness that they have given to you towards your church until there was a time that they have to decide their faithfulness to man or to you. They gave more faith and love and loyalty to you because that was taught to them by the messenger and by the late executive minister and by your teachings that are recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Oh, Father in heaven, help us to have the same kind of spirit. Even though that they are gone, we will always remember how they defended the faith. May we, the younger generation, defend the faith of our brethren. There are so many who want to destroy the faith of our brethren. But if you are by our side, we will accomplish everything. And if by chance death will come, we will say that it is gain. Because what is to be given to us is our salvation that we all aspire for. Dear Lord Jesus, we remember all your sacrifice, for you are the greatest example in how you show to each and every one of us in how we should live uprightly before the sight of the Lord Almighty God. Help us to prepare all the more for the, for the anniversary of the church that is drawing near. May you bless all those who will perform, and may we all be blessed and be able to experience the presence of our Father. Father, we ask that you please bless all those who have been oppressed, especially the family of the late executive minister. Some of them are in jail. Some of them were cast away. Oh, Lord, you know their situation. And you know the situation of all your other people who have been oppressed and cast away in the midst of our loneliness. Be the one to feel in our hearts that you have never left us that you will always be there for us, especially when we are sick and there's really no one there to hear our cry. Please heal us from our ailments that our life and strength will be utilized in worshiping and honoring you. Father, we ask everything once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you once again, beloved brethren, for joining us in our Bible study for today. And have a pleasant day to all of you both. That's all.